So you go to a doctor, you get your blood work done, they look at your TSH and your vitamin D serum levels and they tell you, hey, everything is fine. But you and I both know that fine is a lie. I lived that lie for many years. I'm a guy who used to get things done. But once my autoimmune issues flared up, it messed up my thyroid levels and it reactivated old dormant virus in my system. It was like a perfect storm. I felt like I was a ghost of my former self. I remember trying to do things, simple things as, you know, mowing my lawn in my backyard or carrying a couple of boxes out of the garage. But halfway through, my heart would be hammering like I just ran a marathon and my legs would feel like they were made of concrete. I would have to go sit in the dark for two hours just to get my breath back. I wasn't just tired. It was like someone had pulled the spark plug out of my engine. And unfortunately, this is the reality of Hashimoto's and reactivated EBV. It's a total system failure. I would get brain fog so thick that I would be sitting in a meeting or looking up at a spreadsheet and the numbers just would not click. I felt like I was losing my edge, yet my doctor would point out to a piece of paper and they would tell me, hey, your levels are all normal, your tests all look good, you're fine. So today I'm going to tell you why these normal lab results, they are failing you. We are going to look at the secret of science of vitamin D resistance, the hidden EBV signature in your blood work and why taking supplements is only half the battle. Now guys, look, I'm not a doctor. I'm just a guy who got fed up with his doctor and who refused to accept a life of normal lab results. So I'm sharing my personal story because I know there are thousands of you out there who are still waiting for your energy to come back. I hope that the data we cover in today's video, it will give you the leverage you need to finally improve your health. So let's start with Hashimoto's. This was my first enemy. Now Hashimoto's doesn't just mean underactive thyroid or slow thyroid. It's an autoimmune disease. So it's like an autoimmune civil war. What happens is that your immune system identifies your thyroid as an enemy and it starts attacking your thyroid. Your thyroid is the master controller of your metabolism. So it's like having a thermostat that's being constantly tampered with. Your body never knows how much energy to produce. So it defaults to power saving mode. And that's why you feel tired all the time. Then you add reactivated EBV to the mix. Most people think of Epstein-Barr virus as just mono that you get as a kid, but this virus is a hitchhiker. It stays in your system forever. So when your system gets stressed or your thyroid levels drop, the virus wakes up. It's like a silent parasite that hijacks your mitochondria, the literal batteries of your cell. It siphons off your ATP, your cellular fuel, to replicate itself. So while Hashimoto's is messing with your thermostat, EBV is draining the batteries. And no wonder I felt like shit. I was, uh, you know, I felt like I was running on 5% battery. In my last video, I talked about taking 10,000 international units of vitamin D3 supplements. But many of you commented saying, I take vitamin D and I still feel like garbage. So here is the secret of the standard lab test that they don't tell you. There isn't just one vitamin D. Most doctors only test 25 hydroxy vitamin D. That is your storage form. It's the money in the bank. But for your immune system to actually fight EBV or calm your Hashimoto's, it has to convert this storage into 125-dihydroxy vitamin D, which is the active hormone. Now in chronic infections like EBV or long COVID, your immune cells, they can go rogue. They start pumping out way too much of the active form while your storage form stays low. It's like having a broken ATM. Your bank account says you are broke, you have low money, low storage, but your pocket is full of cash and your body's regulation system is screaming in panic. This imbalance causes inflammation and keeps you in a state of logged fatigue. So let's talk about why if you take something like 2000 international units of vitamin D3 supplementation, that's not going to be enough. If vitamin D is the key to your immune system, then your VDR, which is the vitamin D receptor, it is the lock. So these receptors sit on the surface of almost every cell of your body, especially your immune cells and also your brain cells. 
So when the key turns the lock, it sends a signal to your DNA to start fighting viruses and uh, to stop attacking your thyroid. But here is the problem. In folks with chronic fatigue and Hashimoto's, these locks are often sticky. Medical research has identified something called vitamin D resistance. There are two main reasons for this problem. So the first is the genetic glitch. Many of us are born with a slight genetic variation. Think of it like a manufacturing defect in the lock. So the key fits, but it's incredibly hard to turn. So you are putting the key, you are trying to turn, but the key is not moving. And if you have this glitch, a normal amount of vitamin D in your blood, it's like trying to open a heavy vault door with a plastic key. It just snaps. You need a much higher pressure of vitamin D, meaning you need a much higher dosage of vitamin D to raise the vitamin D serum level in your blood. Now the second reason is the viral sabotage. So this is the part that blew my mind when I read about it. The Epstein-Barr virus, it's actually a very smart virus. One of its primary survival strategies is to down-regulate your vitamin D receptors. The virus literally gums up the lock on your immune system cells, so they cannot receive orders from the general. It's a brilliant move by the virus if it can keep the vitamin D keys from turning. Your immune system stays confused, the civil war of Hashimoto's continues, and the virus can keep siphoning off your energy. No wonder you will feel tired and exhausted. And this is precisely when my doctor told me that my vitamin D serum level of 30, 30 nanograms per milliliter, it was fine. They were wrong. For a healthy person with perfect locks, 30 nanograms per milliliter is fine. But for those of us with sticky locks and viral sabotage, we might need our levels to be much higher, to be around 80, 90 or even 100 nanograms per milliliter just to overcome that resistance and get the system to click and go back online. Now here is the part where most people and even some doctors, they get it wrong. They hear 10,000 international units and they get worried about toxicity or calcium buildup. And they are right to be concerned if you are taking vitamin D in a vacuum. High dosage of vitamin D is a powerful tool, but it does not work alone. It has two partners in crime that act as the safety valve for your entire system. So the first partner in crime is what is known as vitamin K2. It acts as a traffic controller. So think of vitamin D as a loader. Its main job is to pull calcium out of your gut and into your bloodstream. But vitamin D is a blind loader. It does not know where that calcium is supposed to go. Without vitamin K2, that calcium can end up in your soft tissues, your heart walls, your kidneys, it can cause kidney stone, or in your arteries, you know, that can cause hardening of the pipes and that can lead to cardiovascular problems. So vitamin K2 activates a protein called osteocalcin, which acts as a traffic controller. It grabs the calcium from your blood and it drives it directly into your bones and into your teeth where calcium belongs. Now, if you are taking high dosage of vitamin D3 without K2, you are essentially inviting a traffic jam in your cardiovascular system. So I never take my vitamin D3 without at least 200 mcg of vitamin K2, specifically the MK7 form. I have linked the vitamin, you know, tablets that I'm taking in the video description below. But you don't have to take exactly the one I'm taking, you know, any other brand will work. I'm just, you know, uh, sourcing the one that I take. I honestly don't think brands matter that much. So you can pick whatever brand makes sense to you. Now, the second partner in crime is magnesium. I, I like to call magnesium as a spark plug. Now, every single enzyme in your body that metabolizes vitamin D requires magnesium. So if you are low on magnesium, which a lot of folks are due to stress and poor soil, when these folks dump a huge dosage of vitamin D3 in their system, their body will rob its own magnesium stores to process that vitamin D3. So you end up with magnesium deficiency. This is why people get heart palpitations, anxiety, and sometimes even insomnia when they start taking high dosage of vitamin D3. It's not the vitamin D, it's the magnesium uh, you know, depletion that is causing these symptoms. So I take 400 milligrams of magnesium glycinate every night. This keeps my system balanced. It keeps my spark plug firing and it ensures that my vitamin D 
it's being converted into the active form. This is the form that actually fights virus and you know calms down my immune system. And finally, if you are pushing your D3 levels into the optimal 80 to 100 nanogram per milliliter range, you need to check ionized calcium levels every six months or so. It's the ultimate safety check to ensure that uh, your K2 and magnesium are actually doing your job. So when you get these three in sync, so vitamin D3, K2 and magnesium, you're not just taking vitamins, you are recalibrating your entire immune system. You are giving the general his orders, setting up the traffic controller and making sure that the engine has enough spark to get the job done. Now, if you're interested in more details, you can check out a vitamin D masterclass that I have created. It's linked in the video description below. It's the full breakdown of how I manage my autoimmune markers and keep my chronic fatigue in check. I've also listed the exact brands and dosage of uh, vitamin D3, K2 and magnesium supplements that I take daily. They are all in the video description below. So thanks for watching this video guys and please don't forget to like and subscribe. And next, why don't you guys click over here and watch this video and I will see you guys over there. Bye.